Hi everyone, this is Bren from Verne Arts and today I'm going to be showing you how I draw and color hair. I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys on Instagram to make this video, so I decided to finally go ahead and do it. Okay, so for this video I'm going to be using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And I believe that's the biggest iPad they make that's out right now. For drawing, I'm going to be using my Apple Pencil. And the app I'm going to be drawing on is called Procreate. Procreate is probably one of the more popular drawing apps that many artists use for drawing. I draw on it pretty much every day and I love to use it. It's very user friendly and maybe in the future I'll make a video on some tips and tricks for Procreate beginners. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and make a new canvas. This particular one we're going to be working on is going to be 4000 pixels by 2000 pixels. And on most of my canvases I usually work with either 300 or 400 dpi, depending on what kind of drawing I'm making. Okay, now that that's all clear, we can move on to brushes. The brushes we're going to be using today is going to be three that already come installed with Procreate and one brush pad that I specifically purchased just for hair. And I'll make sure to link that in the description below. Okay, so for all the flat coloring, we're going to be using the calligraphy brush, the brush pen to be exact which we're going to use for the base color of the hair. The second brush we're going to be using is going to be just for shading. This is the airbrushing tool called Soft Brush. The third brush we're going to be using is under touch-ups and it's called Flowing Hair. And lastly, we're going to be using a variation of different brushes from Art With Flow Hairbrush Pack. And like I said, that will be linked in the description so you guys know where to get it. Alright, now that you guys know what tools and brushes I'll be using, we can move on to the tutorial. I decided to sketch a simple generic female face. I'll sketch the head and maybe up to the shoulders. And a quick little side note, if you guys are interested in making a tutorial on how to sketch and draw faces, I can also do that, so let me know. I know in the past I've made a few little short tutorials on Instagram on how to draw a face, but I'm not really talking, so honestly, it's just kind of like a regular speed painting video. And maybe here on YouTube, I can make a more detailed tutorial on how to do it. And if you guys have any suggestions on future videos you'd like me to make, please leave your ideas on the comments below. I'd love to read them. Okay, so now that the sketch is completed, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. You can duplicate a layer by simply swiping to the left and click on the duplicate button. And I'm going to duplicate this one more time, so in the end I have three different female templates. So now I'm just adjusting the canvas so that way the hair can be wherever I want it to be. Okay, we are going to be working on three different types of hair today. The first one is going to be a short, straight type of hair. The second one will be a curly or coily type of hair. And the third and last one will be a long, wavy type of hair. Okay, so let's get started. Our first drawing we're going to work on is going to be the short straight hair. We're going to make a new layer and start sketching. Whether you're a beginner or not, you can use references to help you out with this step of the drawing. References could be used as guides or just plain inspiration. And honestly, you don't even have to use them at all. The point is, when you're starting to draw, references can sometimes be very important. If this is your first time drawing hair, make sure you study how hair acts with the face, whether it's behind the ear, up on a ponytail, or combed to the side. This is all very significant, and the more you sketch, the more natural your hair will look the next time you draw. It's very important to also study the way wind reacts with the hair, since this could very much help your drawings become more lively and seem more realistic. 
when I first started drawing, hair was probably one of my least favorite things to draw. But now, honestly, it's probably one of my favorites. And sometimes I even base my characters around their hair. So if you're happy with the way the sketch came out, we are going to go ahead and add a layer below the hair sketch layer and start to pick the desired color you'd like to work with. So with this particular one, we're probably going to go with a darker blue color. Maybe in the grayish blue tones. And now we're going to pick our flat coloring brush. The calligraphy brush pen to be exact. I love this brush. I use it anytime I have to outline anything or when I'm looking to have really clean or crisp lines. When you're adding in a flat color, you want to make sure the brush you're using is making very solid lines. Because if you have any sort of opacity in your lines, once you drag and drop the color, it won't fill in all the way. I would recommend to draw some stray hairs here and there, because in real life, nobody's hair is perfect. And this way, you'll give your character's hair a little bit more of a natural look to it. Now I'm grabbing the eraser tool and just fixing the corners and little mistakes that I've made. I usually forget this tip and it's very important so I'm going to share it with you guys. Make a separate layer for your color swatches. The colors would typically consist of the base color of the hair, the shadows of the hair, which would be a darker color from the base, and the highlights, which would be a lighter color of the base. Once you have your swatches done, it'll be easier in the future so you can go back and forth between colors, which you will have to. So now we're going to make a new layer, and this one's going to be for shading. And don't forget to make your shading and highlighting layers into clipping masks above your base hair color. This way, you won't have to worry about coloring outside the lines. First, we're going to start with the lighter colors. We are going to go to airbrush and choose our soft airbrush tool. When you're shading in the lighter colors, make sure you apply it towards the middle of the hair. This means away from the roots and the ends of the hair. Basically anywhere where you think, light will be reflected from it. And I'm going to go ahead and make another layer. This one's going to be for the darker shading. The darker shading is going to be applied to the roots of the hair or anywhere near the face, neck, or ears. Kind of like how you see here. If you know you're going to have more than 10 or 15 layers, it probably makes it easier for you to name your layers. So that's what I'm doing now. And you can name them whatever you want, just as long as you know what they are. Next, we're going to add some texture. Go ahead and make a new layer. And we're going to go to our Art with Flow hairbrush set. Click on the darken brush. Since this is a darker textured hair, we're going to go in where the darker shading is. Pick a darker bluer color that's closer to black. As you're adding in the color, pretend like you're almost brushing the hair. That way it'll look a lot more natural. Since this is a texture brush, you can almost go anywhere, just as long as you're going with the flow of the hair. And just keep going until it looks right to you. And now we're going to put in the highlights. We're going to add in another layer. Instead of darken, we are going to click on the lighten brush. Choose a lighter blue color, closer to white. And we're going to add in the highlights on top of the lighter shading. You can add as much detail as you want. Kind of like the texture brush. This highlighting brush helps the hair have more dimension. Without it, the hair would just look flat. Once you're done with the highlights, you can go back and add more shading to wherever you think you need to. And this last step is my favorite. You're gonna add in another layer and this one's gonna be for single hairs. For this one, the brush you're going to be using is called Loose Hairs. And that's just what it is. You're going to go back to your drawing and add random hairs wherever you feel the need to. This step just makes the hair look a little imperfect and more realistic. 
it's going to be completely up to you on how many loose hairs you'd like to add. It also depends on the environment your character is on. So, for example, if your character is outside, it's probably going to have more loose hairs than a character that is indoors. Now that I'm done with the single hairs, I'm going back and adding some extra highlights to my hair. And that's it! We've completed our first hair drawing. I'm really happy with how it turned out. If you want to recreate this look, but want to try a different color, all the same steps apply. Okay, so our second hair tutorial is going to be a coily or curly type of hair. Same step as the last one, we're going to start with a simple sketch. With curly hair, it's more about the texture, so the sketch doesn't have to be super detailed. With the sketch, you kind of just want to get a basic shape for the hair. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and make a new layer. This layer is going to be your base color. Grab your calligraphy brush and start outlining the hair. When I'm outlining curly hair, I usually use squiggly lines to go around. Kind of like this. Instead of rounding it out at the ends of the hair, I'm making little spring shapes, if that makes sense. But if you're not a fan of this particular style, you can go around with the squiggly lines all the way around the hair. After I fill in the color, I'm making sure all the hair is 100% filled in. Since we're dealing with curvy lines on this one, it's just always better to double check. So with this one, we're gonna go with a brownish color for the hair. We are gonna make a new layer. You can name it if you want to. This one is gonna be our darker shading layer. Grab your airbrush and start coloring. We're gonna once again shade closer to the face and underneath the hair buns. <laughs> oh yeah, and don't forget to do your color swatches. Okay, let's make a new layer. This one's gonna be under Art With Flow hairbrushes, and you're gonna choose the curls brush. Pick your darker color, and start by making small circular motions to add in the curls. Once you're happy with that, add in a new layer, and you're gonna repeat the same step, this time with a lighter color. When you're done, go to your loose hairs brush and start adding in some single curls all the way around the hair. This technique is going to add a little bit more volume to the hair and is also going to make it look a little bit more natural and realistic. Procreate also comes with its own set of hair brushes if you don't want to buy this hairbrush pack necessarily. The downside to these brushes is that it doesn't come with a lot of options but we are going to use one of these today. You can find this one under the touch-ups tab. And we're going to be using the flowing hairbrush. And we're just going to repeat the same last step, adding hair around the edges of the hair. Around the hair buns, the ends of the hair, near the hairline, and around the forehead area. And using the same brush, you're going to choose a lighter color and start drying curls all over the hair. This is basically going to be your highlights layer. Make a new layer, and with your last layer, you're going to use the same brush and the same technique, but this time with a darker color, closer to black. Keep adding these darker curls all over the hair, preferably where the darker shading is at. And there you have it your curly slash coily hair is done. This one is probably my favorite out of the three we're drawing today. Curly hair can add so much personality to your character when you're drawing. A lot of people get intimidated by drawing this type of hair, but I don't think you should be. In my opinion, it's probably one of the easiest and prettiest ones to draw in color. Okay, we've arrived to our last drawing. This one's gonna be a wavy type of hair and probably the type of hair that most people draw, myself included. When I'm sketching wavy hair, I want to make sure I know exactly where each wave is going to go. 
so later on when I'm adding in the shadows, I'll know exactly where I'm shading. Once you're done with the sketch, you're gonna make a new layer and this is gonna be your base color. Let's go with a dirty blonde this time. And you guys already know the next step. Grab your calligraphy brush and start outlining and filling in your base color for the hair. Now, I didn't mention this before, but in case you didn't know, I'll say it. You obviously know that you can color in the hair entirely manually if you want to. But on Procreate, kind of similar to the bucket tool on Photoshop, you can actually drag and drop the color to the desired place you want filled in. Just make sure all your outlines are actually touching to form a closed shape. Otherwise, when you drag and drop the color, it's gonna fill in the whole page and you don't want that. After you make a layer for your color swatches, you're gonna make another layer and this time for shading. When I'm shading blonde or any type of light colored hair, I usually use a variation of different types of darker shades. Not just one like I did on the previous two I just drew. You'll notice how much more depth it adds the more I shade with a variety of darker tones. So the shading on this one's gonna be a little bit more meticulous. One thing that I used to do a lot when I first started coloring was that I would use black for shading and white to highlight. Of course, I later found out that it looks more natural when you use cooler tones to shade, like blues and purples. And when you want to highlight, you use warmer tones like yellows and oranges and reds. This tip actually helped me so much in all my drawings, and I use it all the time now. So while we're shading, we might as well talk a little bit more about why I'm doing this tutorial. I started drawing almost a year ago, and I decided to make an Instagram to post all my drawings. I never really thought anybody would follow me except for like my close friends and family and I just can't believe how many people have following me and supporting me through my drawing journey. I get so many DMs about people begging me to make tutorials on Instagram or YouTube so I decided to go ahead and finally do it. I didn't know how much work it would be though. <laughs> this is like my fifth day editing and recording the video and oh my god i have so much respect for people that do this for a living <laughs> and honestly if this goes well i'll probably do it a lot more often so i would love to know from you guys if you like this video or not <laughs> i can take the criticism <laughs> okay let's get back to the tutorial so we're gonna make a new layer and this one's gonna be for shading but the lighter tones this time Again, you're going to add the lighter shading towards the middle. For example, on the bangs, it's going to be in between the ends and the roots. And the same method applies to the ponytail. Once you're done airbrushing your shadows and lights, you're going to go back to Art With Flow Hairbrush Pack, choose the Darken Brush, and on a new layer, you're going to use that hairbrushing motion to add some texture to the hair. Start from the roots and go with the flow of the hair. Apply this method everywhere you think it needs it, especially closer towards the darker parts of the hair. Add a new layer and click on the lighten brush. This time you're going to add the actual highlights to the hair by choosing a lighter color. After I was done with that, I went back and added more texture to it. Alright, now to my favorite part, the loose hairs. Choose your loose hairs brush and start drawing single hairs all around, like so. This is my favorite part because there's really no wrong way of doing it, so there's no pressure. And you can get pretty creative with it. Okay, that's it. We're actually finished with all three different types of hair. I'm actually really curious of how many times I actually said the word hair in this tutorial. Probably a scary amount. I truly truly hope you guys enjoy this video and I'm so sorry if it's all over the place. This is the first time I'm ever recording a video with my voice on it. Ever. 
and posting it on YouTube for people to see and hear. And like I said before, if you guys have any ideas on future content I should make, please leave a comment and let me know. And TH thanks for watching this video. It really means a lot when you guys show your support. Until next time, hope to see you guys very soon.